to see all of you here. There is a very exciting event coming up very soon and it's the Revival Night! 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 And you are invited. It is called the Knights of the North Castle. It will be fantastic. Fanta fantastic. Fantastic. That's right. You see, we have to understand something very important and that is that there is a battle going all around us all the time. And this battle, God wants you to win. But you cannot win this battle with your power nor by your strength. But God gives us His armor to win the battle. So we're going to be talking about that. There is a battle for your soul and we need to put on the full armor of God and we must win this battle. So join us for our revival night, 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 night. And we will have a wonderful time together. Register today. Stories of the Bible. Jesus appears to Thomas. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. But some people did not like what Jesus was doing and they put him to death. He died on a cross and was buried in a tomb. For three days, Jesus' body laid in that tomb and it seemed that there was no hope. But very early on Sunday morning, the woman who cared for Jesus went to go visit his body, found that his tomb was empty and that he was no longer there. For he was risen. He was alive. Woohoo! What? Hey, oh! Jesus appeared to his disciples to show them that he was alive. One of the twelve disciples, Thomas, was not with the others when Jesus came. Hey! Hey, Thomas! Later, the disciples told Thomas, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands. Put my fingers into them and place my hand into the wound in his side. Eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Oh, hey guys. Peace be with you, he said. Then Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. Thomas said, My Lord and my God. 
Then Jesus told him, You believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. Today's reading is John 20, verse 19 through 31. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciple when Jesus came. So your other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where his nails were, and put my hands into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hands and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord, my God. Then Jesus told them, Because you have seen me and you believe, blessed are those who do not see and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which were not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Good morning, another beautiful Sunday. I am so glad to be with you to worship the Lord together. Today I want to start with questions. And the question is, how do we know something is true? How do we know something is true? And secondly, how do we know that someone could be trusted? How do we know someone could be trusted? So those are two questions. How do we know something is true? How do we know someone could be trusted? Now, if I were to tell you that I flew an airplane and went to Hawaii, la, 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 you know, Hawaii, and came back by swimming back to the United States when I was only five years old. Now, you're going to have many questions about that, okay? That do I even have a license to fly an airplane? Do I really am an expert in swimming that I could swim from Hawaii to the mainland? Or that I was only five years old? Really? Five-year-old? actually doing that? Okay, so you might fill yourself with all kinds of doubt. Let me say it, other one. Let me ask you, if I were to tell you that I drank coffee today, you guys know that I love coffee. Oh, I love coffee. All kinds of coffee. Oh, coffee is my favorite, right? And so, you that's more likely that I have drank coffee today. So you might think to yourself, yeah, he probably did. Yeah, but here's the thing. You did not see me drink my coffee. You didn't see me drinking, going into Starbucks or, you know, uh, co coffee and beans. Or, you, you, know? you haven't seen me. So how could you be so sure? Even though it's more likely, if you're not there examining and watch me drink coffee, then you're completely not sure. How about this? I have a bag here. I have a bag here, and I were to tell you, there is my favorite snack. There is a choco pie in here. And some of you said, okay, really? Seriously? 
I don't know, that doesn't look, good, look like a choco pie. And you might have all kinds of doubts. So, okay, then I will ask you to touch it. And some of you will go, okay, let me touch. That's not a choco pie. That's like a, more like a box. Okay, well, all right, then. How about this? How about if I unveil this choco pie? Yeah, you're going, yeah, that's a choco pie. But some of you still doubt and say, hey, that's not a choco pie. That's just a box. How do you know there's a choco pie in there? Huh? You know, some of you would doubt. So, okay, then I will uh, open it up. How do you open this thing? Uh, okay, I'll just get to open the side. I, I open it up. I open it up. And then, voila! There's not just one, but box full of choco pie all over this place. See? Choco pie. Mm -hmm. And some of you might say, uh, Pastor Jerry, I know that it looks like a choco pie, but how do you know there's a choco pie inside? Okay, so I open it up. And voila! Choco pie! Yes, <laughs> I made a mess out here. But anyways, yes, it's a choco pie. It's got chocolate cover, marshmallow, and a little bit of uh, bread. Oh, but how do you know if it's really a choco pie? It looks like it, but for real, is it really? So I must taste it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love it. I'm loving it. Now I have to preach with... Sorry about that. Oh my God. I need to water it down with my coffee. Oh my gosh, that was so delicious. Mmm, lots of sugar. Anyway, so you have seen this choco pie. And so, okay, now I get it. I taste it, I touched it. Yes, it is a choco pie. Okay, now I want you to understand what we read today. It shows the confusion over the disciple, 11 disciples. Now, the question that they had was that, how do you know for sure to believe that Jesus was resurrected? You see, they have seen Jesus died on the cross. They have seen the nails that went through his hands and his feet. They saw him suffering on the cross. And now this was on Friday. The next day is called the Sabbath. On the Sabbath day, people are not to work. And so they want to speed the process. So you know what they did? They wanted to break their legs. So by breaking their legs... They cannot lift themselves to breathe, and if they cannot breathe, they die quickly. So they wanted to make sure they celebrate Sabbath day, which is a day of rest. So they wanted to break the leg of those three that were hung on the cross. They broke the first guy, and the next was Jesus, but then they realized Jesus was dead. And they want to verify that he, he is truly dead, so what they did was that they got a spear and they pierced the side of Jesus and the blood and water came out of his side, making sure that Jesus is really dead. And he was buried and uh, they all knew that Jesus is died. It was not a big news. Everyone knew that Jesus died. That's not something to be dispute, that Jesus really died. He was in the grave on Sunday morning. Women came hysterically, and they go, Oh my gosh, oh my gosh! They all came to the disciples and said, and said We saw that empty grave. The grave of Jesus is empty. And we saw Jesus on the way. They were excited with joy. 
And, and the disciples go, shaking their head and go, what? what are you talking about? How could that be even possible? You know, up to this point, they really didn't believe. So you know what they did? That evening, on Sunday evening, the resurrection morning, uh, that evening, they locked their doors. They, they were in a room. They were in a house, and they locked the doors. Why did they do that? Because th they knew that the, the, there was an empty grave, and Jesus' body is missing. And you know who the religious leader is going to go after? Those people who put Jesus on the cross, those people who killed Jesus. You know who they're going to be after? They're going to be after for his disciple, for they are to believe that it was disciples that have stolen the body. So in that fear, they locked the door and they stayed in a room. There are probably a discussion happening among the disciples. They could say, could this be true that he is resurrected? Oh, that's impossible. But the woman said he, he's, they saw them. They saw Jesus. And, and so they were all in this confusion. It's like, what is going on? Up to this point, they were not sure if Jesus really was risen from the grave. And guess what? Guess who shows up? Jesus. Even the doors were locked. Jesus came right into the room. How is that, impos how is that impossible that he maybe walked through the, the walls? Yeah, his resurrected dead body. Uh, he, he came to them and said, Jesus says, peace be with you. And they were so ecstatic. They were so overjoyed. It is you. They saw the pierce in his hands and, and the piercing on the side. They knew that it was Jesus. And they were so overjoyed to see him. Now, when Jesus appeared to them, one of the disciples was missing, and his name was Thomas. He is known as Didymus. Didymus means twin, meaning it's double, that it is double thoughts, you know, always questioning. So his name fits right in. He was not with them, and disciples told them, Hey, we have seen the Lord. We have seen the Lord. He was here. And Thomas goes, come on, guys. I'm not going to believe until I put my finger into his pierced hand and put my hands on the side. Until then, I will not believe. He was adamant to say that he's not going to believe until he have touched Jesus. So he did not believe. And a week later, at the same place, Again, this time the doors were locked and comes Jesus. And he says, peace be with you. Now this time Thomas was with the, all the disciples. Asking Thomas, Jesus said, put your finger on my hands and put your hand on my side. And Thomas didn't have to do that. He saw Jesus. So he said, my Lord, my God. Kind of regretful that he was doubtful about Jesus. Jesus then said, You believe because you saw me, but blessed are those who do not see and yet believe. And who are they? That's us. We didn't have the opportunity to see Jesus physically, nor do we touch the, the pierced hand, nor do we touch the, the pierced side. We did not see all that, and yet we came to believe. We are his disciples, and we believe. And how is it possible that we believe? We believe because his words. His word, the Bible, tells us, and we know that his word is true. The word of God is the testimony of God. So when we read the Bible, then we know that it is true and it is the testimony of the people who have seen the Lord. Now, Jesus 
uh, verse 30 tells us Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciple, which were not recorded in the book. I mean, there were undeniable proof and signs that Jesus lived again. He was resurrected. They all had the proof and signs that was not even recorded in the book. But yet, there is that undeniable proof. There was no room for doubt that they live according to this reality of Jesus' resurrection. They were willing to risk their life for this reality that Jesus was raised from the grave. Why? How is this possible? Because it is true. When you risk your life, when you risk your life, then you know that it is true. Would you risk your life for a lie? Would you risk your life for made up stories? Would you die for what is not true? If the resurrection of Jesus Christ is made up story, would you die? If someone is trying to kill you, you probably said, no, 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 I was just making that up. I was not really serious. He really didn't, I didn't see him. But if you were to give your life for this, then you know that all of his disciples had to die in their faith. Because they believed that Jesus died and resurrected, they gave their life for that truth. In fact, they also believed that if they were to die, that they're absolutely convinced that they will live again. Just as Jesus said, it's just as Jesus did. So they were so convinced that they were able to, to give up their life for this gospel. So there is one reason, the one reason that Jesus wrote, I mean, John wrote, there was one reason that John wrote this gospel. This one reason, verse 31 tells us, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The reason John wrote this gospel is so that you will believe Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. By believing in him that you would have life in his name. You could have complete confidence in his, in his words that God is true. And, and you put your faith in the testimony of the Bible as John saying, We have seen the Lord. It is true what he said. He died, but he is risen again. As famously, John chapter 316 tells us, For God so loved the world, He gave His one and only Son, and whoever believes in Him will not perish, but have eternal life. As John said that, as John testified, we also came to believe that Jesus died and it was resurrected. And so if you believe Jesus, if you have faith in Jesus, you have life. And you have that life that is everlasting, the life eternal with God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for, so much for your testimony of your word. The Bible speaks the truth, and we know what happened because all the disciples wrote it down and as it happened that lord that you did come back to life you did speak to your disciple you met up with all of your disciples and god that you have shown that you not only speak the truth but you act the truth and you are the truth by believing in you that we would have eternal life help our hearts to believe that you are the son of god that you are the Messiah, that you are Savior of the world. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.